And there's some wonderful equipment outside and available, but it doesn't matter how good the equipment is if you can't use it. And I think one of the problems that we have is um, confusion around this, and no, nowhere better than how we refer to this. Everybody who writes a paper and every company who brings out a product invents a new summary for spills as the proved name by the uh, uh, Association of Laparoscopic Surgeons. We thought we would try and get our own generic title that wouldn't be competing or contravening any uh, copyrights. Now, you'll see on the left side of this screen uh, a selection of the operations that have been done by single port approach. And um, almost any procedure seems to have been done by single port approach and it has been published. Um, this shows a single port splenectomy in a young woman and it illustrates the problems of a single port approach is that the, uh, there's a loss of triangulation, everything's going in parallel, um, the instruments clash at the outside, um, the view is more restricted than you would have with a conventional procedure. Um, and what, what we know is that these procedures are feasible, um, you can do them, and the question is, should you be doing them? There, there are a number of arguments for and against. So in this particular case, we thought this was the, as everybody does, the first one done, a laparoscopic single port splenectomy, but then somebody in Turkey reported two um, at the same time, so in fact it may have been the third one. Uh, so the technique's feasible, and it can be accomplished in straightforward cases such as that. But the problem is this loss of triangulation, that if you insert the instruments in parallel, uh, then the view is in line, and you can adapt to that in a straightforward situation. But you'll see from the middle picture that one of the early attempts to correct this was to use curved instruments which crossed over such that your right hand was operating on the left hand side and vice versa. Or on the right hand side using specially shaped instruments such that the uh, alignment of the instrument on the inside was the same as the alignment of your hand on the outside. Which is fine if you're only moving in and out in a linear fashion, but any rotational effect is uh, completely um, different on the inside. And, confuses the issue. So that a lot of effort's been expended in having to compensate for this la loss of triangulation. Um, and in addition, when this first appeared on the scene, it was accompanied by an explosion and delivery of uh, different devices by each of the major companies produced their own variation on a theme, some better than others, none of them cheap. And one of the areas where, in fact, curiously enough, um, single port surgery has taken off more than in some other places is in colorectal surgery. But that's largely because it's, rather than being a single port, you take advantage of using a small incision which is necessary for extracting the, the specimen and use that as the entry point. So that the problem with loss of triangulation is reduced to a considerable extent because you're doing this through a short incision rather than a single port. But it explains why it's become more popular in colorectal surgery than in some other areas. Now, getting back to just why you would want to do it. Well, the first point is, would you want to do it because you want to make the operation more difficult? could be that you're just looking for a challenge, that you're bored with doing laparoscopic cholecystectomies with four ports and you, you think you're better than that and you need a new challenge to keep life interesting. And you want to increase the common bowel duct injury rate. Any compromise in exposure or access in cholecystectomy is going to be associated potentially with that. You want to do it to make money, either as an individual because if you're working in a competitive field, particularly where activity equals income, um, any new string to your bow may look attractive to the ignorant public. And commercially, it looked like a new potential market um, to produce new goods and, and sell them. So those were two big drivers in the beginning, to make publicity. 
As I said, every single operation that's been done by a single port approach has been associated with a publication, and there's this great desire among some people to be the first to do something. I'm sure that most surgeons would like to be the first surgeon to do something than to be the first patient to have it done to them. And I've always wondered how you get informed consent in a situation like this. And it's probably more to do with the charisma of the surgeon selling the operation to the patient than properly informed consent. And finally, to make it better for patients. Well, we don't know yet. We didn't know at the beginning. We probably still don't know now. Um, there is some information, but it's not desperately convincing. And if you look at the trials comparing conventional open colectomy with laparoscopic colectomy, the differences in the trials, such as classic, were only transient and, and vanished after a week or two. So looking for a difference between one and three or four ports may be even more difficult. Now, if you're going to introduce it, then we're going to need decent evidence, and that's derived from the current literature. Um, and as you'll see, the current literature is sparse. We need evidence of safety. Um, this is one of my overriding concerns. We, we don't have a decent safety profile, and it's one of the great shames in the profession that having hopefully learned from the introduction of laparoscopic surgery 20 years ago, um, that we failed to grasp the nettle when this new te technique came along to introduce a national register so everything could be recorded and the safety profile could be established rather than going into it with the sort of ethics of snake oil salesmen, as I've said. We need to look at cost effectiveness and cost benefit, particularly in the NHS environment. And again, the additional costs that are associated with this. It is possible to do straightforward operations with conventional instruments, but there are disadvantages to that. And doing it more effectively almost inevitably requires additional cost. There's a clinical governance issue to which I've alluded already, that how do you, how do you recruit or enroll patients for a new technique with uh, no established safety profile and potentially at greater risk? And that's why we need decent audit, and we failed to deliver on that. So in terms of getting decent evidence, the priorities are to demonstrate at least equivalence or potentially superiority in the disease outcomes, that is, the intra- and post-operative complications, uh, resource utilization. Uh, these are short-term. We should be doing that. Long-term outcomes in terms of pain and hernia, cosmesis and safety. If you look on this website, clinical trials, Everybody who fancies doing a randomized trial registers it with this organization. And there's a large number of trials, mostly in Europe and America, being registered. <clears throat> this is a sort of summary of the numbers of trials that are registered. Now, there's a big difference between registering a trial and delivering on a trial. Um, and that's a summary, again, of the number now. The most, last time I looked, were 345 things registered. But in terms of delivery, this is what there's been. This uh, is a summary paper about publications in single port surgery published just this year. And you can see the exponential rise in the number of publications in the red bar and the blue bar are those relating to colorectal surgery. So there's, there's a large amount of literature, but the quality is depressing. Um, this is a summary of the trials that have been completed. And if you look in the white, you'll see that what they've looked at are very short-term outcomes, inflammatory reaction, pain, oxidative stress. I don't generally look at my patients and wonder what their oxidative stress levels are. Uh, pain scores. And there are two trials of laparoscopic cholecystectomy versus conventional laparoscopically been published recently. And this is showing the quality of the evidence that's out there. And you can see there are only three one minus trials of clinical relevance. And in fact, the most recent of these, the, the bottom one there, said that there was no advantage of single port over four port. But is it all just about cosmesis? Now, if you've got a body that looks like that, then I imagine cosmesis probably is pretty important. But most of my patients having cholecystectomy or fundoplication or whatever don't have bodies like that. And although the results of a single port appendicectomy can be quite stunning when it's done and it goes well and it's straightforward, the majority of patients undergoing laparoscopic surgery are not teenage girls. 
And the question is whether there's a compromise to achieve an appearance like that. And with, with small ports, the cosmetic appearance can't be much difference. And I think one of the advantages is doing it trans-umbilically rather than um, reducing the number of ports. And then when you talk about cosmetic surgery, we've obsessed with five millimeter ports and getting rid of five millimeter ports. But when you look at what some people consider a good cosmetic result, um, scars are not that important. And we're maybe obsessing a little too much with eliminating two or three five millimeter trocars. And again, surgery exists to get results. It's not to provide a technical challenge or a diversion from more mundane pursuits. So just because you're now competent and skilled at four port cholecystectomy doesn't mean to say that you should be moving on to single port just because you fancy a challenge. Now this systematic review on the feasibility and safety of single incision laparoscopic colectomy concluded with these three thoughts. That there is still concern for increased complications when less experienced surgeons try this technique. They suggest that new techniques, for example, needloscopic tools, uh, is a worthwhile alternative, and smaller instruments may lead to similar cosmetic advantages and better ergonomics with instruments. And incisions are not simply added up. The, this was an interesting paper which looked at the mathematics of multiple versus one incision. And incisions do not simply sum and the conclusion from this uh, interesting paper was that two small cannulas is better than using a single larger cannula. And certainly a single port surgery usually requires a bigger hole. The needloscopic surgery, I'll skip that. Um, I, I'm quite impressed with that. The three millimeter instruments, they preserve the ergonomics and it allows you to proceed in the way that you're familiar. And it does seem safer than the limited view you get with a single port approach. Now in order to compensate for the difficulties of the single port approach, the, the engineers have been looking at it. And it seems that in order to um, eliminate the disadvantages of the single port approach, you have to go for increasing uh, complexity and therefore expense. This is the spider, which is an ingenious device which um, allows you to triangulate on the inside with the instruments in the way that you would normally by using uh, guided sort of catheter technology. And it does work, but it certainly isn't cheap. And again, another way, if you've, if you've got a robot and you need to do something with it to justify its cost, people are using robots to do single port surgery. And uh, this one, looked at the uh, challenges of single incision cholecystectomy with the robotic technology. Um, and their conclusion was the technique was judged more complex than standard four port laparoscopy, but easier than single incision laparoscopy. So I guess if you've got a robot and you don't mind the cost, that may be the way to go. But the elephant in the room is the risk of bile duct injury, particularly in laparoscopic cholecystectomy. And it's remarkable how few of these are recorded in any of the series that have been reported. But there are several anecdotal accounts of patients. And when you speak to people who repair bile ducts, there does seem to be a slight uprise associated with the use of single port surgery. But curiously, these don't feature large. And certainly no, nobody reports deaths in any of the publications, but I know of deaths associated with single port surgery. So the economic reality of it is there's it, this balance between the time something takes, the quality, and the cost. And that translates into whether the, the speed, is it faster, is it better, is it cheaper? And you can't have all three. If you want good, safe, single port surgery, it's probably going to be expensive, and it probably doesn't justify the cost. So to go back to my title, progress. What is progress? Well, the second definition there is development towards an improved or more advanced condition. Well, it's certainly progressed towards a more advanced condition, but I'd leave you with the thought of the, what's a gimmick? A gimmick is a trick or device intended to attract attention, publicity, or trade. And I think that sums up where single port surgery still is at the moment. So I'm in the gimmick side, I'm afraid. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Sig. Uh, a healthy dose of realism and common sense, uh, as usual. Are you still using the technique? Selectively. I think the only place where I think it's been an advance in my practice is for a right-sided adrenalectomy for a small tumour. Because to do that transperitoneally, I have to do four ports. But you can do it through the back using Voltz's technique with a single 1.5 centimetre incision. And for a small tumour, I think that's a definite advantage. The occasional splenectomy in a young woman, but for ITP, but that's it. I do not use it as a regular basis, and I don't use it for cholecystectomy. And do you think, though, that perhaps one of the advantages are the spin-off benefits in technology, those instruments that you show, which are awesome, really? They must have applications elsewhere apart from single instrument surgery. The, 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 well, the, the spider has been developed specifically for single port surgery, but... But the technology that's evolved to develop that must have spin-off benefits. Yeah. The, well, well, often these developmental things have unexpected developments, you know, that the, you can't predict, suddenly somebody will get an idea that this yeah. is going to be ideal for this. And um, I'm not aware of any uh, extra things that, that have come from it, apart from just refining the technique and making it more complex and therefore more expensive. Okay. 